Good morning, good morning and welcome to Family Time this week. It's Palm Sunday, which while I think next week will be the official sort of... Oh, I'll still go. While I think next week would be the official um, year of doing family times, it was actually a Palm Sunday that we did the first family time last year. So, wow, what an occasion. Welcome to a whole year or a whole liturgical year of family time. So, um, so I suddenly had to realise oh, I can't do clip clop to the clop to feet, whatever we did last year. I can't draw the palm on my palm hands. So, but we are going to do palm crosses this week. The, the, this year. Um, but of course Palm Sunday, it's a reminder of uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Let's pray as we begin. Dear God, as we celebrate your presence with us, we thank you for uh, family time, for what it has been for all of us as we have gone through this year. And pray that it will continue to, that through this, we may be able to share in your love and your story. And may we be part of your story as we continue in our faith, now and always. Amen. Amen. So, you know the story, the, the, the palm branches are waved when Jesus enters um, and he's on, uh, and, and it's this triumphal entry. But of course there's all those weird things that happen because people are thinking he's going to be the leader that's going to be a military leader to, to take Israel out of, uh, from under the rule of the Romans. But instead he comes in on a donkey, not a big horse, not a steed or a charger. And it doesn't seem quite as it should be. It's that thing of the world turning upside down. But even so, people are welcoming him. They're getting palm branches and they're waving the palms. That's the actual palm, just to remind ourselves, waving the palm branches and um, they're laying the cloaks down so that there's a triumphal entry. And like I say, the world is turned upside down because in a week's time or through the week, Jesus goes on this up and down journey of huge emotions and uh, which obviously culminate in the Last Supper, the um, the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane in Jesus' crucifixion, but then the triumph of next week on Easter Sunday. So there's ups and downs all the way. And of course, it's the disciples who are as emotionally involved as anybody else. And the invitation this week, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, is that we join together in that journey as Christ's disciples to experience some of that story afresh. We know the final story, the final ending, so we, we don't have to fear in the way that the early disciples did, but we, we can join in this story. And so let us think about the fact that we have a palm cross. Now, this made out of palms, um, so that's actually a palm frond, and to remember Palm Sunday, the waving of the palm, but then the cross, obviously, the ultimate sign of Christ's victory over sin and death, which gives us new life. Now, I don't have an actual palm frond. And to be honest, I'm quite pleased because if I was having to make that, they are quite sharp on the edges, aren't they? I think I'd probably cut my fingers or something. But what I hope we can make is a palm-like cross using bits of paper. Now, I... I've got um, longer than an A4 piece of paper there. Um, if you use an A4 piece of paper, you come to uh, a cross that sort of is about that size. I'm hoping with this length of paper, I'll get a cross of about that size. So um, I'll leave that to you. And while I try to make this on camera, um, I would say that you can find lots of instructions online to be able to do it yourself. Um, the, the thing I would say is when you come to make your, your, your cross is that the piece of paper is, is actually uh, properly straight. But if it's slightly tapered and goes a bit thicker at one end, it does make it harder because you won't be able to um, feed the paper through the, the, the sort of pocket that you make at the back. Right, now then, I've practiced this a few times 
for myself and realising I now need to sort of practice it for you, which will be a little bit harder, but here we go. So about halfway down, um, if you, you know what, I'm going to have to do it this way. You, you fold it across and to make that shape. So it's just a simple fold across. Yep. And then fold the vertical from the bottom, fold it up, turn it over. And this time I, I tend to put it down. You fold it up again this way. Now you can keep it quite tight or you can actually keep it so you leave a little bit of space so it's not entirely folded against the bottom there so that there's a bit of a pocket there's space to get your your um, your piece of paper through now let's think I know which way I'll go so I've got it like that and now I'm going to which was my last that's the vertical this is the horizontal I'm going to go back across and then I'm going to do, hopefully it's quite a nice thing. So you get the end of the cross and work out where the pocket is and start to slide it through. And then to make a, to kind of make a bit of a knot is if you pull it all the way through and fold that down. Okay, so that's your vertical this is your horizontal what you do now is you come back again through the knot the, the the pocket as such and then fold it back in but make sure that you are roughly equidistant equidistant on is that about right i think that's about right Get it about equal distance so you've got the same arms on the cross before you then sort of fold those flat. Okay, so you've got a bit of a cross. I'm just going to try and bring back the page because for some reason my the computer has stopped working and isn't responding. So I don't know who's online. I can't talk to you now and say hello. But anyway, um, let's keep going. The So then we get the, the tail as such and we bring this up and fold it into that pocket. And this is where we change slightly from uh, a normal palm cross, because normally, as you will see on this one, you it comes all the way down and then folds back up into the pocket. Yeah, it comes all the way, but we don't have enough length to do justice to it in that way. And so I would recommend that you just leave it as a single bit and at the top that's where you have the loop okay and if you want once you've decided that's the right shape you can then flatten that out and oh, oh, i don't believe it we actually got the cross it actually worked while live on screen so i'm very very pleased that i actually managed to get to that stage i hope my fat fingers weren't getting in the way too much so you could see some of the actions like i say you can um, you can find instructions online. That's how I know how to do it, um, and you can make your own palm cross. Now, this particular paper, it was um, it was not quite card, but it's not just paper. It's a slightly thicker paper, so it does have some um, resistance in it, so you can hold it to an extent, um, but not not as strong as a normal palm cross. I'm quite pleased with that one. That looks like a good cross. I think it's excellent, Ken. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Harry. really, I'm very really good. Chuffed. Bit really of chuffed. bit of origami. Yes, kind of <laughs> made the pocket and got away with it. Um, now, I, I remember when I was younger, I I was in the church choir, and so I was in church most most years, and every palm cross I remember years later or, or each year I would keep them, and then I'd write on the back the the year that um, the the year of that palm cross. I remember when I moved a house or sometime, I remember finding one and it was kind of, I don't know, from to show my age from the 1970s all the way through to the 1980s, I had all these palm crosses um, with my awful writing on the back saying 1977 or whatever. But not, not something I do these days, but um, I don't know, you might want to mark your special 
uh, Palm Sunday 2021 by making your own one and writing on it. Or even if you're using card this thickness, you could actually write a prayer for this year. Pray for, um, for us as we come out of lockdown. Or give a prayer of thanksgiving and write that on it. All sorts of things you, you could do, which you probably wouldn't be able to do on the ridged surface of the, of the palm cross. So that's the palm cross. Um, like I said, if you use an A4 sheet, you're roughly going to get one this size. And I'll, I'll show what happened with this one. Not on the actual piece of paper, but I had, um, uh, oh, shouldn't be advertising, but I had a magazine card, um, which I thought, I wonder if you can do that. So I just cut a thin strip off the edge, and that meant that I got a couple of different colours involved. So I was looking particularly at that picture, thinking, wow, if that came out on the cross being really vibrant and could talk about new life and, and the, the colours of spring coming out on your cross. Like I say, that's only A4, so it would be a smaller cross. But hey, I will leave that to you. Hopefully, if you find instructions and it works for you, by the end of today, I dread to think how many crosses you might have lying around the uh, lying around your room as you make one, and then get a longer piece of paper, then you get the sellotape out and see how big you can actually make a cross in, in, in your front room or whatever. I won't give you any more ideas because I can just see the nightmare scenario uh, that that could cause. But I haven't been able to get back online. Uh, who, who's on? I know that Amber, uh, Amber and Adele were on right at the start and Babs. Anyone else? Who's Jackie. On? Jackie, yeah. hi. Jackie Brunages. Oh, Jackie Brunages. Hi, Jackie. Good to have you with us as well today. Um, I know I was on a bit later, so hopefully everyone else as you come on, you'll see it later during, during the week or during today. But let's pray. Let's pray God's blessing on us as we go into the week. Dear God, we thank you for the symbol of your cross, but also the remembrance of the palm um, for this week and the cross for the celebration, the, the ultimate sign of victory that we will celebrate next week. And we do pray that as we um, hold our palms, our, our crosses, as we think of them, as we pray with them, that we may remember you and remember your story this week and be part of it. Um, find our own place in that story, in our relationship with you, now and always. Amen. So, be blessed this week. Stay safe. Um, I know we're still at school in Haverham, so it feels odd doing Holy Week at while, while we're still at school, but I pray that you'll know God's journey as we go through regardless, and that you will know God's blessing today and always. Bye for now.